Uh, Walker, what does it mean? Well, Georgia's been very stereotyped. When it's fashionable to pass, Georgia has stayed with a run about 80% of the time. And the compelling reason for that is the ability of Herschel Walker. But I would look for the day that Georgia to make some minor changes at least and you be more flexible in the use of Herschel. Put him in motion, Keith. Use him as a wing back. Get the ball to him on some short passes rather than just pitching a handoff from the I formation tailback. And Blackledge, of course, is his offensive package is, is an intermediate range. He is not a nickel and dime thrower. Well, the striking thing is the explosiveness. Penn State can run or pass equally well. Blackledge threw 22 touchdown passes, passed for over 2,200 yards. And this is going to present major problems to the Georgia defense. One of the things that's happened in the last few hours, it seems to be a loss for the Georgia Bulldogs. Their backup tailback, Carney Norris, missed curfew. Gone. Not dressed. Out of the ball game. Freshman Tron Jackson steps in as the backup. That weakens that important tailback position and the kick return position. Well, uh, that will put more emphasis on Herschel having to stay in the ball game. But when this is a team sport, and regrettable as it is, you have coaches have to make those decisions. Already called the team captains we'll now on the field, field with the referee, Vance Carlson. You may kick or receive or defend either goal. Penn State has receive. won the toss. It is a big eight officiating crew. Penn State will receive. So the Nittany Lions will have the first offensive series. And uh, the man who's going to pull the trigger for them is the man who's going to introduce the offensive starters for the Nittany Lions. Hi, I'm Todd Blackledge, quarterback of the Penn State Nittany Lions. And I'd like to introduce you to the rest of the starting lineup for the Sugar Bowl. Starting with my roommate, number 25, running back Kurt Warner from tiny Wyoming, West Virginia. We all call him Curtis Blow. Next, we have John Williams, fullback, number 44, from Somerville, New Jersey, and his friends call him Doodoo. -Doo. Kevin Bow, number 11, wide receiver and return specialist from Long Island, New York, recently won the ET Lookalike contest at Penn State. Thanks, you want to be. <laughs> Greg Garrity, number 19, from Bradford Wood, Pennsylvania, is a fine receiver, losing a lot of his hair, though. Mike McCluskey, big tight end from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, father, judge, high school, tremendous pass receiver. Hope you get a few blocks in the sugar ball. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Bill Kantz, real name Julius, nickname Juju, one of the twin towers at offensive tackle from Bell Vernon, Pennsylvania, tremendous football player. Big Dick McGinnis from State College, Pennsylvania, an offensive guard. Very, very, very seldom do you see him without a big pinch of skull in his mouth, but he looks good today. Look good, Dick. Mark Battaglia, Batman, many other nicknames that I can't mention on national TV, <laughs> but Batman is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a tremendous offensive center, and he loves seafood. <laughs> Pete Spiros, offensive guard from Maryland, Potomac, Maryland, number 56, one of our team captains, and he's been a three-year starter and spends a lot of time in the weight room. Doesn't have much of a neck. Ronnie Heller, big offensive tackle, converted from tight end this year uh, from Farmingdale, New York, and he's really filled in and done a great job at offensive tackle for us. And that's the starting lineup that you'll see in the Sugar Bowl, and that's the offensive lineup that's going to do a number on the Georgia Bulldogs. He hopes, he says, he hopes. And of course, as we noted at the very beginning, this is one of those games where it's just let them play because these are two quality teams from two great universities coached by two outstanding groups of coaches. The Georgia Bulldogs will kick off Kevin Butler, the sophomore from Stone Mountain. He can knock it deep. And back to return, Kevin Bow, number 11, and Tony Mumford, number 12, and the 49th Sugar Bowl game is underway, and Butler knocks it all the way to the back of the end zone. No return on it. The Georgia Bulldogs, 11-0, ranked one in the AP and UPI polls. Their record on the season, you see, they started a little slow. That trouble with Clemson, a good team. Had the scuffle against BYU, had some squeezes along the way, closed out with a strong showing against Georgia Tech. Penn State, ranked number two, stumbled just one time. That was against Alabama. They've lost, uh, had trouble. In fact, Joe has never beaten the Bear. And they were trounced 42-21, but uh, righted themselves and finished very strong. 
So the general feeling is that the winner of this game should claim the national championship, if for no other reason, because of the ballot power in their respective sections of the country. And as we come to the attack on the first offensive play, it is Kurt Warner, number 25, carrying the ball. Georgia's defense lines up with Dale Carver, Freddie Gilbert, Kevin Jackson, Tim Crow, Stan Dooley. Backers are Tommy Thurston and Will Fort. The secondary, Ronnie Harris, Tony Flack, Terry Hogue, and Jeff Sanchez. And Frank Royals, I think this is what Vince Dooley was worried about, that Penn State would come out here on the first offensive series and just try to jam the ball right down their throat. And if they can do it, look out. But Penn State's offensive line is much superior physically than Georgia's defense, and that could be the plan. But on second down, they go to the pass. And it's Warner getting the ball at the 30, where he is uh, brought down right at the 30. And that looks like enough for a first down, as he was able to twist himself forward and move the ball beyond the market. So it is going to be a first down for Penn State. So they run on the first play, throw it on the second, and they get 10 yards. We can look at these graphics. It shows Penn State's balance. 2,100, 215 yards passing, 207 yards rushing. The first time in over 40 years that Penn State has passed during the season for more yardage than they ran. But this shows the equal balance in their offense. Joel Coles is now in there at fullback for Penn State. John Williams moves into the tailback position. And uh, Johnny Williams, who has played both the fullback and the tailback position, is a very good one. He may wind up in his senior year being only a junior. When Kurt Warner leaves, he may wind up being the tailback next year. But John Williams has already rushed for 600 yards from the fullback position, and he's caught 21 passes, and that shows the versatility of the Penn State offense having a fullback that effective. Second down and nine from the 31 for the Lions. Wearing what is uh, fondly referred to as their generic white uniform. They are not fancy. Got... Here's the down the middle for the tight end, McCluskey. And it's a big one all the way down to the Georgia 37 yard line. Big Mike McCluskey, 6'5, 240 from Philadelphia. Watch Blackledge fake to the tailback. This holds the linebacker. Now McCloskey is going right down the middle. Georgia was out of free safety. While they're the defense without a free safety, they put one of their defensive men up on the playing the short defender, leaving the hole down the middle for the completion, 34 yards. McCloskey has caught on the regular season 18 passes for better than 12 and a half yards per catch. He is a big play man for a tight end. First down, Lions, Georgia, 37. And back goes Blackledge. No pressure on Todd. Over the middle. Good to Garrity. First down. Penn State inside the Georgia 10. Penn State's offensive line are doing a great job. Georgia's rushing only four people. That's what they like to do. And you see Blackledge have the poise. Throws the ball right over the middle. Watch this. One thing that Joe Paterno says about Blackledge, he has cut down his stride a quicker delivery than any time, and Garrity catches his 33rd pass of the season for 27 yards. And it's first down and goal to go for Penn State. The ball just inside the Georgia 10. Bulldogs now are going to have to get some more people up on the front. They do. They go into a seven-man front right now with the linebackers plugging a hole. Blackledge back, whips it to the corner, pass caught by McCloskey, knocked out of bounds inside the five. So the tight end continues to play an important role for the Lions offense as he steps out at the three. McCloskey is six foot five, weighs 245 pounds, and in studying the film, he, he looked to me like in charging off the line, he could keep up with the wide receivers, which means he has a 4'6 to 4'7 speed. Blackledge now four out of four in his passing for 74 yards. Kenny Jackson and Greg Garrity lead the ball game. Kurt Warner and Johnny Williams come back into the ball game. Coles stays in for blocking. So they're going to go into a power eye. Two full backs and the ball is to Warner. Kurt Warner going to the outside. It's a quick race to the flat. Touchdown, Penn State. Zone. 
go see a great block by Holes number 20. Also pulling out uh, is Law, the guard. They tie up uh, Hope, the safety man, who was blitzing on the play, and Sanchez, the free safety, couldn't outrun and get to the corner before Warner scores with the ball. How easy Penn State made it look on that drive. 80 yards. No point. Agon Chitano is good. 5'7", 165 pounder from Coral Springs, Florida, and Penn State goes 80 yards in 2 minutes and 51 seconds to lead it, 7 to nothing. So Kurt Warner carries the ball, the first two plays of that drive by Penn State. One of them uh, running, one of them receiving the pass for a first down, and then had the privilege of cantering it in to the corner from three yards out. And Penn State's on the board, 7 and nothing, and Massimo Manca now will kick it off. The deep people are Tron Jackson, number 25 for Georgia, and Keith Montgomery, number 23, Jimmy Harrell, number 82. It'll be Harrell back on the goal line with Montgomery. One is a freshman, one is a sophomore. And Jimmy Harrell, the sophomore from Somerville, South Carolina, took a step forward and decided he'd better wait it out. So Georgia will start at the 20 with Johnny Lastinger opening at the quarterback position. Herschel Walker will be the tailback. And uh, working at fullback will be Chris McCarthy, who's turned out to be a fine blocker, winning the job at midseason. Chuck Jones is the flanker. He's not as swift as you've seen in the past. Kevin Harris is another wide man to split in. Georgia is a little bit short of real raw speed at the wide receiver positions. But let's see what the Bulldogs decide to do in their first defensive possession. As Penn State leads by a score of seven to nothing. And it is Lustinger at the line of scrimmage cut down by Greg Gattuso, a big junior out of Pittsburgh. The offensive front for the Georgia Bulldogs. Norris Brown is the tight end, 6'3", 215. Jimmy Harper, a tackle, 270 pounds. Mike Weaver, a guard, a sophomore, 275. Wayne Radloff, the center, at 266, 6'5". James Brown, uh, he's at 245 at guard. And Guy McIntyre weighs in at 250. Second down and 10 for the Bulldogs from their 20. Lastinger turns and gives it to the up man, McCarthy. The fullback, he crosses the 30. And that will be a first down for Georgia. So they send the short man on a nice trap hole over the left side, and he gets the first down. Sefter, Gattuso, Ofer, Ashley. The four men up front. The linebackers are killer right of six Paffenroth for Penn State. The secondary, Biondi, one of the smaller men on the field, but a good one. Roger Jackson, Mark Robinson, and Harry Hamilton is the free safety. Plays a linebacker about half the time. First down, Bulldogs, their own 30. McCarthy, the fullback in motion. Herschel Walker's first carry goes to the outside. He gets it up to the 35. And there were one, two, three, four, five white shirts over there. Biondi was the man that shoved him out of bounds. One thing that Penn State would try to do to Herschel Walker's sweep plays, run him to the boundary. They'd feel like he's less effective going to the boundary, running east and west, rather than when he finds a crease, turns up inside, and makes big yardage. As we look at Herschel's marks for this year, 1,752 yards, 5.2 average per rush, 16 touchdowns. If he stays healthy and if he stays at Georgia for his uh, senior season, there's no reason why he won't break all known records as a running back. Got it again. Coming to the left side. Gets around the corner and then he has cut down. Coming up out of the secondary, it's Mark Robinson, number 32, the junior free safety from Silver Springs, Maryland, and he took him down with authority. Most people most people would say, what is a free safety making the tackle on the line of scrimmage? He's programmed to do this. Robinson, number 32, is coming all the way from the free safety position. You can watch what a fine tackler he is. Tackling Herschel low. Jo Joe Paterno says that Mark Robinson is the next to the best tackle he's ever had at Penn State. Third down and three for the Georgia Bulldogs from their 37. Outside it goes to Walker. He's got the first down. He's looking for more. He's out to the 44 before they cut the feet from under him. And making the tackle, Walker Lee Ashley, number 37. They mark it down at the 44, and it's another first down for Georgia. Frank, I think he's running so much easier now with so much more confidence. He seems to sense where the opportunities are for him. That's a good point, Keith. His coaches say that he has gained the confidence to where he can wait and time his blocks of the offensive lineman to make the most yardage. Here's Herschel's NCAA records at the end of his junior year. Westinger, quick stand-up. Little passes thrown and dropped 
and it's incomplete. It was very close to being a lateral. Herman Archie, a freshman out of Columbus, was not overly aggressive in going for the ball. That was within a foot of being a lateral, looked to me like. One of those uh, confidence passes to let uh, Lastinga throw and complete the first pass to the ball game. The ball is coming forward just barely. Arch is just a freshman, and he made that freshman-like mistake, taking his eyes off of it, trying to run before he catches it. As Joe Paterno, what a fabulous, distinguished, illustrious career he has had, and so has Vince Dooley at Georgia. Second down and 10. Go back McCarthy. Second effort to about the 47, maybe the 48. Clarence K now is in the lineup. He's number 84, six foot three, 225 pound tight end. A fierce blocker and a pretty good pass receiver. He leads, the Clarence K leads the Georgia receivers with 12 receptions, which gives you an indication of just how ineffective or how Georgia has at least pressed the running game and pretty much ignored the passing game. Nine minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. Georgia with a conversion on third down of a little better than 46% over the past season. It is third down. They need seven. Lastinger straight back. He has all day. He throws it over the middle, and it is complete. And the gain is good for the first down. It moves down to the Penn State 37, and it's Clarence Kay, the big tight end, who was all alone to make the catch. What a great call it was. Another short pass. A confidence builder taking to Herschel and letting Kay, the tight end, delay, taking a block, and then just tossed the ball right over the line of scrimmage because the linebackers had dropped deep. Radisek had dropped 15 yards deep, and Kay caught it for the first down. Bulldogs operating from the Penn State 37. Lastinger turns it upfield himself. He is hit by Radisek as he turns it upfield and gets in across the 34, just barely. Those two linebackers that Ken Kelly 98, Radisek 97, and Papenroth 33. Of the three of them, uh, Radisek and Kelly are the rangier and the quicker. Penn State is quite known for their great linebackers, and these fit in the end of the category look at the tackles Radisek Radisek leading with 71 Pat and Roth and Kelly third and four and uh, eight pass interceptions amongst them ball is pitched out to Herschel Walker away from one away from two away from three to the sidelines and out of bounds first down Georgia Bulldog Pat and Roth finally slid him out of bounds Well, that's a familiar run that we've seen many times from Herschel Walker. The Georgia fans are accustomed to this. A great block by McCarthy, number 46. He's got to make the key block. Gray is pulling around. Watch McCarthy block the, at the feet of the number 17, Hamilton. And then free safety, Robinson missed the tackle beyond the nearly, well, he did miss it. And finally, Paffenroth bringing him down. And it's first down, Georgia. The ball is at the Penn State, 21. And in motion now is lasting a turn. Penalty flag is thrown. The play goes up the middle with McCarthy carrying. And let's check the flag came from a linesman. Well, Georgia seems to be moving back, uh, Keith. One thing that Georgia doesn't need are penalties. Because the Georgia offense pressing the running game, if it's first and ten, they average three and a half yards per play. Big eight crew, referee Vance Carlson, Bob Caceres, umpire, Dale Schroer is the lineman, Kent Hauk, line judge, John Schroeder, back judge, Artie Polk, the back judge, John Schroeder, the field judge. This is Vance Carlson's last game, 25 years of it. Big eight retires you at age 57. He's been a good one. He's worked, I think he said, 244 major college games, 20 bowl and games. Outside, offense. First down. Keith, I want to echo those remarks about Vance Carlson. He's called some games for Arkansas through the years. We respected him, admired him, and he's had a very, very outstanding career. We'll miss him in coaching in the football. Ball is at the 26-yard line. First and 15 for Georgia. Lastinger gives it to Walker. Up the middle he goes, picking his way, slipping and sliding. One man, one man, Harry Hamilton, the strong safety, kept him from scoring. He picked his way through there and almost got away. And there's a penalty flag thrown across the way. Okay. Against Penn State. I'm sure that Georgia will refuse the penalty, but I, I, we've got to comment about the, the call of, of Les Stinger at quarterback, who has been somewhat maligned, even though he's 25 and 0 as a starting quarterback at Valdosta High School and at the University of Georgia. Let's hear the call, and we'll continue that. Well, offside, defense, decline. 
Second down. But on the last play, Lastinger changed the cadence of his snap count. He went to a higher number, and it drew Penn State offside and uh, opened up, I guess, a little bit of a hole. But there's Lastinger, 62 completions, only 41%. 907 yards, but there's some things that we'll talk about about this young man that he can do and do extremely well. It is second down and four from the 15 of Penn State. Fake to the fullback. Last thing he keeps it, turns it, turns it upfield, and he's very close to the 10, very close to a first down. Ken Kelly, number 98, the linebacker, brought him down. As we look at Joe, a little bit worried. It was, I think this possession by Georgia was critically important for the Bulldogs' morale. After what happened to, to the defense on the first down, they felt like, hey, we might be in a scoring duel. As we look at Joe Paterno, he's a little bit worried. Thought his defense might be able to stop him, get the ball right back. That's what he's trying to do. First down. Ball has a good run by Les thing on short yardage. It's also outside the 10, close to the 11. So uh, Georgia is going to have a little room to operate, getting the first down. Keith, that's a great point. Coaches, you can't believe how important that, that is in our signal call and to think that we can get the first down uh, and have maybe eight downs from the one yard line, from the 11 yard line, rather than four from the 10. It's a big point. Harris wide to the left. McCarthy goes in motion. All goes to Walker. Walker dives, losing his footing, gets a yard, maybe two. Keith, we, excuse me, I, I was just going to say one of the trivia questions uh, our producer Chuck I was telling me before the, the game is who blocked for Herschel Walker? Well, here's the man. He has the key block. He's got to block the force man coming right here, Hamilton. Watch him roll him up, number 17. What a great block. That's the, what we call the shoulder roll. He gets that shoulder on the legs, and they roll him up like a window shake. Got to like it, though. <laughs> and he does. Second down and eight. The ball is at the nine. Lastinger on a roll. Ripped it over the middle. No! Intended for Clarence K. And K was so alone, he was lonesome. But it was a great call. Yes, he was. Triple, it was a flood over to the right. The tight end blocked momentarily. Watch K come off and go inside. And the defensive safety man is supporting so fast. Robinson, number 32, took two steps up. Look how wide open he is. That's too bad. He led him just a little bit too much. Tried to be careful. Play couldn't get to it. That's too bad. Third down and long. I'm not too sure I wouldn't come right back with that. <laughs> that wide open is repeating plays is sometimes the best thing you can do. Third down, the ball is near the nine. Harris in motion. Lastinger rolling it along, keeping it, turns it over. Oh he took a whack from Radisek. Scott Radisek, that middle linebacker, was trailing the play. And he came down on him like a fallen wall, and it's fourth down. That gets Kevin Butler, the place kicker in the game. Radisek, number 70, 97, right in the middle of your screen. Watch him plug the hole. He reads it perfectly, keeps his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, where the quarterback cannot cut in behind him. Once the quarterback makes it cut, his cut, he forces the play and makes the stop. So the overthrow of the pass by Lastinger when he had a wide open K cost him the touchdown opportunity. And now here's your field goal try by Kevin Butler. The ball is put down back at the 17. Plenty of leg, and it's good. So Butler, who has had a great career in his two years at Georgia, continues to produce points, and it's now a 7-3 ball game. So both teams get on the scoreboard in their first defensive possessions here. Penn State getting the touchdown. Georgia had the opportunity and missed with it and settled for the 27-yard field goal. Kevin Butler now will kick it off. He has kicked it off, including this game tonight. 64 times, 51 have not been returned. Kevin Bow, number 11. Tony Mumford, number 12, to beat people for Penn State. And Butler hits it. And it's deep again. We're back there and gone. It'll be Penn State's ball. First down at its 20. Keith, I, thought, I think it's worth mentioning that Penn State scored on an 80-yard drive in three minutes. It took Georgia six minutes to go approximately um, Same what, uh, 71 yards. Yeah. So well, that's the nature of the Penn State ball club. Good they point. can burn you from anywhere. Their wide receivers have caught 70 three passes and Georgia's wide receivers have caught 18 passes shows you the explosive talent that Penn State has triple formation Keith. Jackson and Garrity the wide people Warner's in the slot 
And Blackledge back to put it up. He loops out, oh. sets up the screen pass. Warner's got the ball. And Warner's got a big gain up across the 35. He picked up about 15 yards on the screen. Tony Flack, who is the first freshman in Vince Dooley's coaching history to start for it at a cornerback position. So Kurt Warner from Wyoming, West Virginia, who holds some 40-odd Penn State rushing records, turns in a big game. He's going to have a fine career as a professional, I would think. He has worked hard to make himself a better football player, both in running, blocking, pass receiving. He's an all-purpose back now. Lions first down, their own 36, leading by a score of 7-3. to three, Five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Warner turns it back inside. They seemingly had him trapped behind the line of scrimmage, but the agility of the man, he turns it back inside and gets a short gain out of it. Coming up on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, Dallas, Minnesota. Live 9 Eastern time, January 3rd, two playoff teams banging heads. Now, the game's scheduled for uh, Minnesota, but I'm sure most of you have heard that they tore a hole in the roof cleaning the snow off, and I frankly can't tell you at this moment if they are sure the game's going to be played there. They're trying to get it fixed, get a new panel for it. Here's the pass to the sideline by Blackledge intended uh, by, for uh, Kenny Jackson, and Jackson can't get to it. Keep uh, the pass. The game was intended if uh, they couldn't get it fixed to bring it down here to the Superdome, but now I'm told that they will have it fixed and we'll be able to play the game in Minnesota. Keith, on second and long, Penn State has passed 70% of the time, and Georgia came with their first blitz of the ball game and forced Blackledge to throw before the deep pattern that Penn State stresses was, could develop. So he's looking at third down and about eight now from his own 37, just outside there. He sends Kenny Jackson in motion. And he's going to put it up. And there's no pressure on him. Now there's some heat. And they got it. That was a terrific second effort by Tim Crow, 91, a senior from Stone Mountain. Crow was blocked, but he wouldn't quit. Blackledge looked left, looked right, and by that time, Crow had freed himself, and he got it. Number 91, Tim Crow. This is his fifth sack. He's rushing over Laub, the offensive left guard. But this is what we call a coverage sack. The coverage of the backs brought about the possibility of the sack, and Crow did make a tremendous effort to get there. Ralph Giacomaro is in the punt for Penn State. Averaging just under 42 yards per kick, and it's a beauty. A high hanger for Jimmy Harrow. Back at his 22. Up to his 26. 55-yard punt for Giacomaro. Four minutes and six seconds to play in the first quarter. And the Penn State Nittany Lions lead the Georgia Bulldogs 7-3. With 4.06 remaining in the first quarter, 27-yard line of Georgia, Bulldogs have the ball. Walker the tailback, Lastinger the quarterback, McCarthy the fullback. Norris Brown the tight end. Kevin Harris the wide man. Penn State shows a five-man front. Ball goes to the fullback, McCarthy. Three yards to the 30. And among the most interested people, I would think, in this country, would be the SMU Mustangs who won their game today against Pittsburgh, 7-3. to three. Let's watch linebacker Radisek, number 97. Linebackers are taught to read and react and then plug. That's a perfect illustration of what he's been taught and worked on all week long. And from the 30, second down and seven. McCarthy goes the other way, puts him out in front of Walker. Herschel cuts it back. Herschel gets nailed by four white shirts at the 32. The Harry Hamilton, the strong safety, Frank, looks like that he has been assigned to Herschel. Keith, that is, that's what he's programmed for. There's a penalty for roughness now, right now, that was dropped immediately. Officials have stopped the clock. Oh, both teams. There was a little scuffle going on around Walker. It was, I don't believe it was foul. Walker. Personal foul on the offense and the defense. The down counts, third down. Let's watch, the, let's watch and see if we can't pick it up. Ashley, number 37, and Weaver, number 63. I believe both of them lose their tempers. This is a team sport. You play by the rules. You don't get excited. Let the other fella get excited and get the penalty. Well, Weaver seems to retaliate a little bit on Walker, number 37. 
it's third down and four for Georgia. Last finger back. Gets his pass away. Pass is incomplete. He was thrown absolutely right on the hands of Herman Archie. And it's the second time in the ball game that Herman Archie has had the ball in his hands and has tried to run before the ball got there. Keith, that's too bad because that would have been a critical first down given Georgia uh, possession of the football for, for a while longer. He's wide open. 39 beyond, beyond him well, was in behind him and Archer could have made uh, more than just a completion to run after the catch. Jim Broadway comes in to do the punting. Averaging right at 40 yards on his career. A little better than 40. On the season, got a hurry. Lions put some heat on him. Gets a pretty good kick out of there. Fair catch is called by Bow. Back at the 29-yard line of Penn State. 38-yard punt. Good hanger. Keep it. There was a chance of uh, roughing the kicker, but the official did not call it. And so, 2-5-7 to go first quarter. 7-3 Penn State. The right leg. The kick is away now. Watch the leg come down. He has protection as long as the kick is in the air. Excuse me, as long as his foot is in the air. I think it's illegal to, to touch him while it, until his foot returns to the ground. No flag. First down. Penn State 29. Lions lead 7 3. Blackledge gives to Warner. Kirk straight ahead. Gets about three up to near the 32. second down and about seven in the Cotton Bowl today the SMU Mustangs remained undefeated on the season beating Pittsburgh seven to three big day for Eric Dickerson big day for Dan Marino in the Fiesta Bowl Arizona State beating Oklahoma 32 21 and look at look at Dupree Dupree goes for 239 yards and he, he hurt his hamstring he didn't play 14 yard average work Recovered by Penn State back at the 17. Jimmy Payne, number 87. Uh, Jimmy Payne has been a holy terror rushing the passer. He has the greatest knack of defeating the offensive blocker and penetrating. Watch him explode, close the gap. Penn State is very lucky that one of their players, I guess that's Williams, comes over and falls on him. What a play by Jimmy Payne, who has been injured for the last five weeks. They don't figure, didn't figure he'd play a whole lot in this ball game. But his first moment or two is certainly obvious, isn't it? And I think Payne might have jumped offside that time. Or we could have had movement along the front for Penn State. Their penalty flags down. The loss was all the way back to the 17 from the 32 on the sack by Payne and the fumble by Blackledge. And here's the call. Offside against Georgia. Keith, one thing that's uh, critically important when you rush the passer, uh, Jimmy Payne watches the ball and he tries to get the jump as the ball first moves, and uh, he just was a little anxious. But it's a, I, in, in all of my time, I don't think I've seen anybody that's more effective at putting pressure on the passer without the blitz, just individual ability than that young man, Jimmy Payne, number 87. All Southeastern Conference pick is a sophomore and junior and is a senior. Offside defense, third down. And the ball is sitting at the 22. They've got to go to near the 40. Tom Ramsey had a big day for the UCLA Bruins as they beat Michigan 24 to 14 to win the Rose Bowl today. So it was a great season for Terry Donahue and his UCLA Bruins. Third down. Blackledge on a deep drop, goes deep with it, and it is incomplete. Oh, that was a heck of an effort. Upfield by Greg Garrity, got his hands on it, but he couldn't bring it down. And so it'll be fourth down, and Penn State will punt. Jeff Sanchez, the safety man, the emphasis on pass defense is breaking on the ball, changing direction. Watch how far Sanchez, number 21, he's to the left, he's been watched, he comes all the way over, number 21, and he puts his hands and shoulders and strips the ball free. Just a tremendous play. Young man intercepted nine passes, second in the nation, behind Terry Hogue, Georgia's strong safety, who intercepted 12 this season. Jock tomorrow to punt, first punt in the ball game tonight was a 55-yarder. Jimmy Harrell brought it back five yards. Let's see what happens here. He's got it high. It's hanging. Harrell's going to try to come with it. 
One man, he loses the ball. And Georgia will keep it. Well, Jimmy had a pretty good move to find a little crease and some running room. Only thing was he forgot his luggage. Roger <laughs> Alexander. And that luggage is important. Uh, it, I know that Vince Dooley's uh, stomach jumped right up in his throat. He tried to sidestep, and uh, someone there just stripped Alexander. the ball. Alexander stripped yep. the ball, and Georgia alertly falls on it. I believe it's young Terry Hogue, who's always around, and uh, makes the big play for Georgia and has all season long consensus All-America. Terry Hogue, in, the, uh, in his freshman year against Notre Dame, the year Georgia won his first national championship, blocked the field goal that helped ignite the drive to the touchdown that won the game. Herschel Walker carrying the ball. And he just slips and slides and glides through there for about five, five and a half yards before Harry Hamilton again makes the stop to strong safety. Georgia uses a different blocking scheme than any football team in the, that I have seen in my time. They block every man on the line of scrimmage. No one releases, even though Herschel may be running to the right. The left side stays in so that Herschel can come back if he wants to. Second down and five. Walker again, caught behind the line of scrimmage by Walker Lee Ashley. Walker Lee Ashley will play the linebacker last year, started out this year at the defensive left-end position, but he plays better at the right-end position. He's the power in, and he makes a great play. Once, watch him change direction. As soon as he sees Walker cutting inside, he leaves his feet, grabs the, the ankles of uh, Walker, and brings him down. And the first quarter is over in this 49th Sugar Bowl game at the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. And after 15 minutes of play, the ball has gone up and down the field. And the Nittany Lions of Penn State lead the Georgia Bulldogs 7-3. New Orleans with Penn State leading Georgia 7-3. The Georgia Bulldogs have the football at their own 42, third down and four. Melvin Simmons, number 28, wide man to the top of the picture. Herschel Walker, the tailback. He's got it. Going to the sidelines, and he's got it. A whole lot of folks wearing white, including Harry Hamilton, 17, and Joe Hines, 52. And so Georgia will have to punt it. Well, the numbers of the first quarter pr prove that uh, the offenses can move the ball, but the amazing thing, Kent State is minus 22 because of the sacks rushing. They have 90 passing. Georgia on the hand, just, uh, they had just reversed. Rushing leads the the uh, passing about what we expected Jim Broadway in the punt first kick tonight 38 yards Kevin Bow, deep man for Penn State this time Broadway gets it out of there without a whole lot of pressure not a very good kick a low line drive and Bow slips and spins and comes back with that 35 yard punt about eight yards and Penn State will start first down from their own 32. Keith, one thing that we coaches sometimes fear is scoring too easily on your first drive. You get the idea, your team, that is, gets the idea, well, hey, we're going to score a lot of points. It's going to be easy. And uh, sometimes you kind of go into to a state of shock when you don't score the second, third time. That's what's happened to Penn State. Georgia made some adjustments, and they've shut Penn State down on the next two possessions. So I'm trying to look in here and see whether or not Jimmy Payne is out there on the field. Georgia steps in there. Tommy Thurston steps in and calls timeout. And Payne was not out there. Jo Georgia only had ten players. Ten players. Team. Yep. Well, well, maybe that's why Payne should have been out there. 14-15 <laughs> to go in the first half. Georgia will take the timeout. We are USA. 14-15 to go in the first half. Penn State leading Georgia 7-3. Jimmy Payne was not the missing party. He's still not out there, but now Georgia has 11 people on the field to play Penn State. And the Lions will come up first down from their own 32. That's Kenny Jackson in motion coming into the picture. Blackledge back to throw. No pressure. Down he goes. Great catch by Jackson at the Georgia 45. Whoa, what a catch that was. The Penn State passing attack has time needs three to three and a half seconds because their receivers are running deeper than the linebackers dare drop because the linebackers have to support on the nickel and dime passes. Watch number 82 Jackson turn to find eye contact and uh, make the play. Gilbert number 90 is the next to Payne is the next best rusher the Georgia team has. He finally gets back there and tackles Blackledge, but not until the pass has been thrown and completed. 
And first down at the Georgia 45 for the Lions. Jackson again goes in motion. Todd Blackledge drops the throw. He's trying to set up a screen for Johnny Williams. He's got that screen working now, but the Bulldogs penetrate it. And there's a loss on the play of two. Coming through was Jeff Sanchez, number 31, to make the stop. Also, Kenneth Sims, number 57, a linebacker. Linebackers have got to play the screen. That's the thing that worries any coach who's trying to, to get pressure on the passer. And then when they call the screen, come on, linebackers, get there. And he did. You can see where the drives began, the length and result of Penn State. Success on the first one, failure the second, third possession. Blackledge, 7 out of 9 for 111 yards. Second down and 12. Ball goes to Kurt Warner. Gets around the corner. Cuts it back. Great run by Warner. First down, Lions inside the Georgia 25 to the 21. Joe Paterno has said that Kurt Warner is as good as any back that he's ever coached. And you get a clear indication of why Joe feels that. He has the move to go away from the defender. He has the speed. He's going to get a great block from Ron Heller, number 78. Heller's going to block the cornerback out. Watch him right there. Sets him up, and, and uh, Warner sets the block up and breaks back inside, and Georgia finally pulls him down, but not after a long game. First down to the Lions, Georgia 21. Blackledge looks right. Goes over the middle, post pattern, Garrett Eno, thrown too long. On first down plays, right here is a very revealing little piece of information. On first down plays in this ball game to this point, Penn State is averaging a little better than 11 yards per first down play. Georgia only three. Penn State is throwing a lot on first down, but let's, let's watch the Penn State offense, what Blackledge and Warner have done. This is a major key. Watch this. They passed for 241 yards. Warner only rushed for 52. That's the first five ball games. When the offensive line gained credibility and effectiveness, they switched over and began to run the football and pass less. Jimmy Payne is now in to put some heat on the passer if they can find a way to get him through there. Second down and 10. Ball given to Warner. Warner dancing around looking for daylight and didn't find any. Perry Hogue. Warner had juked him and gotten past Hogue on the previous play and made a big gain out of it. This time, Hogue nailed it. One thing that Georgia defense does very effectively is that's pursue up and down the line. That's the strength of their defense is the speed, the quickness when the teams run wide. That was a clear indication of why Georgia's had success with their defense over the years. They're fourth in the nation against scoring. Line 12. Ron Heller shaken up there. The 6'6", 248-pound junior from Farmingdale, New York, is going to leave the ball game. But he's walking off under his own. He's turned out to be quite an author. He's been keeping the daily diary for the folks at home. He was a tight end and has moved to offensive tackle and had a fine senior year. It is third down and 10. The ball is on the Georgia 21. Jackson and Garrity are both wide left. Jackson going back toward the ball. Not going to turn come this way. They're both going the same direction. Look out. It looped out and it's incomplete. Kirk Bowman, the tight end, was actually the closest man to the ball as Tommy Thurston was coming hard and made Blackledge get rid of it. As I've said before, and Keith, and you, we've talked about it, the one thing that Penn State has had trouble with on, on few occasions is pass protection. Here's a perfect example. Their patterns are deep and long down the field. Required three of three and a half seconds. First of the linebacker fired, forced the throw, and a bad throw, and it goes incomplete. Nick Gonchitano now in for a 37-yard field goal try. He's kicked for 56 points. From this distance, he's three out of four this year. The kick is plenty long, and the kick is good. With 11 minutes and 47 seconds to play in the first half here at the Sugar Bowl, the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. The Nifty Lions take a 10-3 lead over the Georgia Bulldogs. Time out. Penn State will kick off now to the Georgia Bulldogs, leading by seven points, 10 to three. There's the time remaining, 11.47 in the first half. Jimmy Harrell and Keith Montgomery are the deep people for Georgia. As Massimo Monka hits the ball and hangs it high for Harrell. A yard deep in the end zone, he's coming out. Wolfo fumbles the ball, goes out of bounds. My goodness, he took a whack. 
And the ball tumbles out of bounds up around the 17. Georgia keeps it. Rogers Alexander, number 95, is the man who's going to knock it loose. Watch this hit. That hit, the headgear went right on the football. And if the force of the headgear, there was no way that Harold could hold on to the ball. Georgia's lucky that it went all the way out of bounds before Penn State could uh, recover it. Bulldogs will start at their own 17. Lions going 47 yards in seven plays. They get their field goal from 37 yards. Double wide, top of the picture for Georgia. Walker, up the middle he comes. And he's up to about the 20. Give him three, Ken Kelly, number 98, helps him to his feet. Georgia. The Professional Bowlers Tour, Saturday, January 15, returning for its 22nd consecutive season on ABC Sports, live at 5 Eastern Time. It will not be live on the West Coast. Chris Schenkel, the host, one of the most successful sports television programs in the history of this business. Here's Lestinger rolling left, throwing to the sideline, pass incomplete, pass intended for Chuck Jones, the flanker. It is at the flanker position that Georgia, I think, really has been hurt this year. They just simply couldn't find, Frank, the kind of speed that they had had previous years. I think that uh, Lestinger's uh, passing percentage is a true indication of that because the defensive backs will squat on your wide receivers and not worry about going deep and there's no room to throw the ball. Last thing is one out of five for 16 yards so far. If we look at Vince Dooley and his record. Three consecutive Southeast Conference Championships. 33 and two. Third down and about seven. That's McCarthy the fullback. Lastinger rolls it that way. Walker throws a good block for him. Lastinger gets up the middle and tries to dive for the marker. He is at the 27. He is close. He's going to be, it depends upon the spot. He is going to, if he marks it to the yard line, it's going to be a first down. But uh, I believe he's just, well, it's going to be very close, as you said. A good, good decision by Lastinger. The receivers were covered. You don't take a chance trailing by seven points. You can always punt it away and let your defense get the ball back for you. Good. First down. Critical. Critical play by last thing. Good judgment on his part. Georgia keeps possession of it at 10-24 to go in the first half. First down. They're on 27. Jones is out of the flanker spot. Number one. In to replace him. Is Kevin Harris, number 20. They lined up in there now with both tight ends. Kay and Brown give the ball to Herschel Walker. And there's nothing there. I mean, nothing there. Walker Lee Ashley, Scott Radosek, and Harry Hamilton. Walker Lee Ashley is six feet, weighs 230 pounds. And on this particular play, watch him use his hands. Puts them on the headgear of Harper, number 75. Doesn't lose sight of the ball care. Now he separates himself from the blocker, which is the mark of a great football player. And Walker Lee Ashley has been sensational for the last two years for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Herschel now 12 carries and 45 yards in the ball game. Penn State's pretty well controlled him so far. Lions lead 10-3. And last thing back to throw. That's time. Go short over the middle from Thomas K. Second reception by K. Just short of first down. Depending again on the mark. Greg Gattuso brought him down. They may have marked him far enough to give him a first down. Oh, Clarence K stretched yeah. that body out. <laughs> he, yeah, he really did. He got about an extra two feet, but that's thinking. That's the presence of mind. And Clarence K is really one of the most physical football players that Georgia has had in a long time. The coaches tell me he could be a starting guard for Nebraska, Southern Cal, or anybody, and he plays tight end for Georgia. Mark, that's a 38 now where it's first down Bulldogs. Double the wide to the right side, and they're going that way with it. Look out. Oh, look out. Biondi had an idea, didn't he? A pass coming in the direction of Melvin Simmons and little Dan Biondi. He's only 5'8", but weighs 170 pounds, and he is well strung together. He was really hunting that thing. Keith, he, he guessed exactly. He took a chance. He knew for somehow uh, exactly what the play was, and if he had just played the ball, he would have intercepted it going in the other direction for the Nittany Lions. Great play by number 39. The smallest player on the squad, a walk-on, but it's Leonard. This is his fourth year. It's a tough little 
Second down and ten. That's Walker. Picking his way. And again, Ashley. Walker Lee Ashley played the blocking very well. Slowed it up. And then Dave Ofer trailing the play. And they bring him down. Penn State's defense is the most unusual lineman that I have seen in my time in coaching. They only have two down linemen. Two, that's uh, Gattusco and Ofer. The rest of the people are standing up on most of the plays in what we call a radar position where they can see and work up and down the line. Occasionally, Ashley and Septa will get down in the four-point stand. On third down, pressure zone. Last finger lobs it over the middle. It is incomplete. Pass intended for Simmons. Lastinger had had a, a little more time. He would have seen Clarence K deep and free. But Penn State was able to generate enough pressure, forcing him to go to the short receiver. Now Georgia will have to kick it on fourth down and seven. 38 and 35 in the two previous punts by Broadway. We can see that uh, how each team has gotten their first downs. About like we expect in any case, and Georgia going to press the run, Penn State press the pass. Broadway a little better this time gets it to turn over runs by all the way back inside the 10 back to the seven gets one good block gets it back up field and look out look out it's a foot race and Broadway the punter slows him down and the pursuers finally get him Clarence K finally ran him down but Kevin Bow almost blew that one wide open. Kevin Bow is one of the top premier punt returners in America. 10.8 average. And you can see why. Look at the move. Young man had a knee operation in 1980. Missed most of the 81 season. But look at the block. He's right there. Papenroth, number 33. Georgia had a great play there by the kicker. I guess that is. Yes. Yeah, Broadway. Broadway slows him down enough for K to bring in and make the play. It was a 52-yard punt. But a 65-yard return. That's that's deficit financing. Kurt Warner in the middle, and again, good yardage by Warner. Well, Georgia in this position on the field is going to have to gamble, trailing by seven with their defense. They're going to have to blitz, try to create some confusion, get a turnover. They lead the nation in. And uh, they're second in the nation in turnover margin, two per game, 35 interceptions, 11 fumbles. Penn State has not turned it over today. Will Forts came off the field a little while ago hobbling. Nate Taylor is in there at a linebacker spot. Will has not come back for this defensive series. And the play to Joel Coles, he is caught behind the line of scrimmage. And that time, Jimmy Payne and uh, his friend Mr. Gilbert, they loaded it up. Payne number 87 is going to penetrate the gap, the quickness. As soon as he recognizes the play, he just takes on the blocker. Spiris number 56 dies recklessly into the feet of uh, one of, excuse me, Coles, the fullback, and it's a loss. Georgia is so effective in critical situations and throwing the bonus for a loss. Knox Culpepper, a sophomore linebacker, was in for a piece of that action as well. The ball is back at the 25, where it is third down and eight. Plusky, Big Mike jumping offside. So that'll back the Lions up five. Keith, we have Freddie Gilbert, a defensive tackle, and we also have Jimmy Payne, a defensive tackle, in the ball game. Those are the two premier rushes, and Georgia needs to apply some pressure Good with a four-man rush. Illegal procedure, movement on the line, offense, third down. Number 59, Jack Lindsay, a defensive tackle, has gone in, a senior for Georgia. And Jack Lindsay has been injured most of the season. He's back in there now. Missed all since the second game. That's the first penalty on Penn State in the ball game. Third down, about 13. Ball is just outside the 30. Blacklitz can stand up, loop to the sidelines, incomplete, intended for Greg Garrity, covering Terry Hogue. Garrity was in the bump with Hogue was knocked off the field of play. He's protesting now, but well, this is good legal. pass defense, Keith. You're allowed to push the receiver with your hands one time as long as he's in front of you, and that is a good play in my judgment. Hogue makes the play, disrupting the pass pattern, breaking the timing is very important when you play a team as effective with a passing game as Penn State is. Fourth down, field goal time. Here's Gunshitano. He's hit one from 37. Now he's going to try one from 47. 
And from that distance, he's two out of three on the season. Nick's got it in the air. He's got enough leg on it. Hooked it left. So the Georgia defense comes bounding off the field, heartened by the fact that they've turned the Lions away with six minutes and 22 seconds to play in the first half. Penn State leads Georgia 10 to 3. And we'll see the Bulldogs with the ball in just a moment. That may well turn out to be a big moment in the ball game. We'll just have to wait a long time, obviously, to see. But uh, here is the Georgia defense starting to get the wobbles for a moment against Penn State. But they were able to come up with that one big play. And again, Payne was involved in it. And Georgia takes over the ball after the missed field goal opportunity. First down at their own 30. And it's Walker blowing it up the middle. And Herschel pounding away. Gets it across the 40. And out to a first down. Picked up about 12 yards. Keith, what we saw was a change in their play selection. He wears a padding on his back. You might have seen him when the fellow picked him up there. And I that think is put there to keep the, he got too many helmets in the small of the back. When he's twisted and turning and fighting for extra yardage, but Herschel had been going wide on the last play. He ran right at the Penn State defense, and I think that's the weakness of it. Here's Lastinger handing the ball off. It's popped loose in there and bounding around. Looks like a red shirt may have covered it. The fullback and uh, Herschel Walker both involved in the play, and the ball came loose. Looks like number 78 was the man that covered it. That'll be Winfred Hood. Tackle. See if we can detect what happened with his faulty ball handling. It's the option play. Full the fullback, yeah. Well, fullback McCarthy is coming out with the football. Now number 97, Radisek. Radisek. He just, uh, no, number 55. 55 knocked it loose. That was Roger Puzz. Roger Puzz pulled it out. Georgia was lucky to get it back. And Walker dives it over the middle on second down and nine. Gets about a yard, maybe two. Blastinger is getting pretty good at the uh, belly. He bellies the ball to the fullback and then takes it out and gives it outside to Walker. But once in a while, he's leaving it in there, and once in a while, it's working for them as Ugga takes a deep breath on the sidelines. Keep it in third and long, which is not the position Georgia wants to put themselves in with very little passing attack. Great play defensively for Penn State by Mark Robinson. Had the man over there. It was Broadway. The No, it wasn't either. It was K. Watch Robinson make a sensational play. He's coming all the way from free safety. Watch him come all the way and picking up the tight end K right there. And it's going to be just by the, the length of his hand that he knocks the ball down. Look at He deflects it. All he does is K couldn't change and... and handle it. Nobody between K and the goal line. He would have right? scored, Keith. He would have. Nobody down there. All right, Broadway comes in now. 38, 35, and 52 on his three punch. And that's a pretty good hanger as well. Bow, who had a big return the last time, on his way again. Comes back out to the 34, 45 yard punt. And brought down by Barry Young for the Bulldogs. And Penn State for the ball. Out close to the 34, first down, leading 10 3. In the race to office automation, some will wait for tomorrow. But for those who choose Wang, today, it'll be business in the fast lane. Because Wang has the computer technology and worldwide resources to automate your entire office now. The choice is yours. Ignore the inevitable or race boldly into the future with Wang, the office automation computer company. When America wanted a go-anywhere radio for light trucks, Goodyear came through with the all-season Wrangler. I've got Goodyear, I'm riding on number one. The go-anywhere Wrangler. One good reason why Goodyear outsells all the foreign radios combined. I've got Goodyear, I'm riding on We've got four minutes and 41 seconds to play in the first half. Penn State sitting on a seven-point lead over Georgia. Lions have the ball in between the 34 and 35 markers. And Todd Blackledge 
Sets him up, double wide, drops back to throw it. Going deep down the sidelines, he's got Garrity, and Garrity has got a first down for Penn State at the Georgia 30. Ronnie Harris, the left corner, got beat on the play. Garrett is going to run right by Hogue, who has the short coverage. But Georgia is in a two-deep defense again. Hogue is going to collision him. The safety man is all the way inside. He's pushed out of bounds, but as long as he tries to get back in bounds immediately, that's legal. Harris has to come all the way across and make the play, but not before the big game. 147 yards for Penn State in the ball game, a net of seven on the ground. So it's the Air Force of the Lions that's working for them right now. Four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Ball just inside the Georgia 30. John Williams. And Johnny muscles his way inside the 20 to the 18 before Jeff Sanchez brings him down. Jeff came in from junior college out in Yorba Linda, California. The free safety for Georgia. And we've got a Pitt State man shaking up on the play. Dave Laub, uh, the tackle, number 60. Big senior from Fairlawn, New Jersey. McGinnis has been sore, but came up uh, able to play for the ball game, though I didn't think that Joe wanted him to play the whole game, and now Dave Laub uh, leaves for a moment. But he's, he's big enough. He'll be back. Keith, on that last play, we saw the versatility of the Penn State offense giving the ball to fullback Williams, and he came close to breaking for the touchdown. They have the numbers rushing and passing for Penn State and Georgia, the comparisons. First down. Georgia 18. Blackledge gives it to Warner, and Kirk is close to the 15. I he is really blowing in yeah. there, isn't he? Keith, he is. I'd hate to be calling defensive signals to try to decide whether I'm going to play against the run or the pass in this football team or whether I'm going to blitz or whether I'm going to defend. Georgia has had very little success getting any rush on the passer with a four-man uh, rushing. Seems like they're going to have to blitz and blitz and blitz, and that's dangerous, risky. They've got Garrity wide left. They've got Kevin Ball at the top of the picture. Williams, the lone remaining back, and they got Warner up in a slot. Last time we saw him in that position, he scored against Notre Dame, and he's going out as a receiver, but it's Williams getting the ball as the lone remaining back and going inside the 10, close to the 8, before Nate Taylor brings him down. Well, Constance Sparrows, the left tackle and left guard, are going to open up some kind of hole. Watch Sparrows block the linebacker. Constance pushes into the inside Gilbert. Look at the hole. Tremendous blocking by the and particular and on the goal line, nearly the goal line uh, area. That's just outstanding by the Penn State offensive line. Now here's something that could be almost bewildering. Total yards for Penn State, 175. But of that 175 yards, Frank, they picked up 167 on first down. Something that is. That's incredible. Penalty flags. Kurt Warner with the ball. He's in the end zone. Hang on. Penalty flag. Back at the 10. Offside, defense, decline, touchdown, Penn State. First half, stick at the end zone. Second touchdown for Kurt Warner. Josh Fatano's extra point kick is good. And it's a 16 to 17 to 3 Penn State lead with 2.43 to go as the Lions take it 65 yards in five plays. Let's look at the replay from behind the defense, behind the offense, excuse me, right behind. Watch the blocking, watch Warner as he gets the ball, starts outside, nothing there, plants the foot. Look at the strength of the legs, watch the cutting ability, watch him start, back up after he hesitates, Gilbert does not make the play number nine. 
now from behind now from behind the defense watch the blocking you at home can see exactly what Warner saw they didn't make the cut as he comes back inside of the Georgia pursuit Taylor number 47 gets blocked look at the hole again outstanding work by the offensive line that was rebuilt by Dick Anderson the offensive line coach for Penn State from large graduation losses of last season Penn State now lining up to kick it off and going deep for Georgia Herschel Walker he is going back to return this kick it is the first time in this game that we've seen it the reason for that as much as anything the fact that Kearney Norris uh, got caught uh, a little short on his curfew and is not suited up for the ball game. So Walker is back there to return the kickoff. Georgia needs field position with 2.43 to go in the first half and down by 14 points. Kind of make you swallow a little hard, Frank, when you put your prize back there like that. Because there's so many bodies flying through the air, going at full speed, and Penn State wants nothing to do with Herschel Walker carrying the ball. Oh, what a mistake that was by Keith Montgomery. The freshman coming across instead of letting the ball go out of bounds and Penn State having to kick it over after a five-yard penalty. The youngster went over and tried to pick it up, touched the ball, it goes out of bounds, and here's Georgia. I just got through saying they needed good field position, and the kid knocks it out of bounds on the eight-yard line. Keith, that you're exactly right. The impetus was the kick, and the ball goes on out of bounds, even though I believe Georgia... One of the up men had touched the ball. Uh, it would still be brought back. Mm. Well, this is not where Georgia wants to start. They're going to have to throw some. Just set up the. Well, they tried the fullback, and McCarthy is just eaten up by Greg Gattuso. Greg Gattuso, number 70, was a fullback in high school and a linebacker, as we've seen so many times. But look at these impressive numbers. What a diversified offense Penn State has shown, going the distance, 65 yards in such a short time. Very quick, explosive offense that can score from anywhere. Second down and 12. The ball is back at the 6. And Walker with it is to the 10, close to the 11. Walker Lee Ashley and Harry Hamilton. Walker Lee Ashley is having a sensational game. Number 37 standing up in a two. Clarence K number 84 is one of the best blockers that Georgia has. But all that Ashley does, wants to do is just keep his feet so that once Herschel makes the cut he can separate himself from the blocker and make the play. Third down eight. Georgia's three out of seven on third down conversions. Going to run it with Walker, and they're not going to get the first down. So Broadway's going to have to come on and bump the ball at Penn State with about 120 or so to play in the first half. They're going to should have a very good field position if they handle it all right. And Penn State takes a very quick timeout to save as much time on the clock. And the way they've been completing passes, they are definitely a threat to score again in this half unless Georgia can make the big play. So the Lions will take the full time out and talk things over. 1.24 to go in the first half. They're leading by 14 and looking for some more. Jim Broadway is on the field now to punt for Georgia on fourth down and five. Four kicks, he's averaging 45 yards. A little less than a minute and a half to play in the first half. Broadway is going to hit it on around the two. We watch it from the end zone. Hit it up near the four. Hangs it up near midfield for Bow. Well, he, he, is a, he is a gambler. He just doesn't believe in uh, sticking the arm up and saying, hey, save my body from misery. He's trying to break the big one. He almost did a Keep moment ago, and he almost popped out with that one. Watch the wall of blockers, Robinson and uh, number 43. They're protecting him, giving him time. You see three white shirts that are giving him a chance. That, I would say... <laughs> Uh, I've seen that punt return used many times. Keith, that's what we did. We blocked, dropped three men to give the, re the receiver a chance to get started. It's a good scheme. And here's Penn State, first down at the Georgia 44 with a minute and 14 to play in the first half. Blacklitz back quickly. Goes short to the tight end, McCluskey. McCluskey breaks away from Sanchez and then steps out of bounds. But I think he, in fact, he does have a first down. 
I want to commend Joe Paterno for the strategy. He came in this ball game. He was going to win. He felt like he had the advantage with speed receivers over the Georgia secondary. And you can see the blitz was on. And Sanchez, the free safety, was late coming up and trying to cover the tight end McCloskey. And McCloskey gets away from him for that reason after the completion for extra yardage. Blackledge again. Now he's getting a little heat. Trying to set up a screen. Johnny Williams never got a hand. John could never quite get a hold of it. Incomplete forward pass. Will Forts has a sprained ankle. We may not see him. At least not in this half. This is what we have for you at halftime. We we'll see both fans talk with both coaches. And have the 1982 Chevrolet Most Valuable Offensive Player Award and check the news about the world. Keith uh, Ron Williams, the fullback, uh, injured his ankle and left the game. Cole's replacing him. Joel Cole. They've got Warner up on the slot. Give the ball instead to Coles. And Coles is caught at the line of scrimmage by Crow. And Jim Crow rides him down. Jimmy got him at the 31. And Joel was able to drag him along for a couple of yards to about the 28. Well, that was a real surprise call with uh, less than a, than a minute to play and the way they've been throwing the football and Georgia's had very little success defending against it. Uh, you would think that they would go for what they've been doing all year. 70 percent of the time throwing on third second and long 55 seconds to play in the first half ABC's wide world of sports. Harlem Globetrotters coming to New York. Return to the big city. Work out with the Rockettes, go to Harlem, and have a lot of fun. Then the men's World Cup downhill skiing, the world's best skiers at Honnenkamm in Kitzbühel. ABC's wide world of sports starting big in 1983 at 5 Eastern time. There are the officials talking now with uh, Coach Vince Dooley of the University of Georgia. Penn State has one timeout remaining. Keith, Georgia's got to decide, do we blitz on third and eight and take the chance on um, throwing him for a loss and yet we have to play man for man in the secondary or do we try to get a rush with four men and try to cover them. That's a big decision and it's a critical decision right now. I don't believe Georgia's defense unit is going to handle Penn State unless they can. They're going to have to get here they come with a blitz. At least they're showing the blitz. They're throwing. And they're coming. Oh they're coming. Gets it off and it is incomplete. There were two of them. Tommy Thurston, number 60, was the man that had a hold of him. But there were four of them coming. Dale Carver, 96, was coming from the outside. And then Thurston took the inside route. This is the advantage of having a quarterback who's big and strong. He takes the tackles, doesn't go down. Watch Carver, number 96. He has Thurston right there, number, excuse me, number 48. Uh, yes, Cole Pepper. But he doesn't go down. He finally gets ready. And that's the difference of 15 yards on the uh, field goal attempt. Don Chitano, 45 yard attempt. It's up. Plenty of leg. It's good. Doug Strang gave him a perfect hold. And Nick Gunchitano nails it. Forty-four seconds to go in the first half, and the Lions lead 20 to 3, and that is the longest field goal of Gunchitano's career. He's only a sophomore. His longest prior to that one was 41. That one was for 45. Well, let's talk about Georgia's offense or the lack of passing. Very definitely, we coaches can fully appreciate as we look into the reaction of, of the kicker and the holder. Gonzatano, he's a happy young man. Being congratulated. <laughs> Taking his tee up before he even got the signal. Georgia has, sooner or later, the absence of passing will uh, make your running counterproductive. And that's what's happened uh, in this second quarter. Once Penn State could shut down the passing, they can concentrate and think run with the linebackers, think run with the defensive end. Everybody think run. Safety man Robinson up tackling on the line of scrimmage. Very, very difficult to move the ball. 
Joe Paterno. I know he's very proud. There he is in the bowl games. And I might mention that in three previous Sugar Bowl games, Joe Paterno has lost all three of them, scored only one touchdown in the three games. Now he has, what, two touchdowns and two field goals in the first half. Here's the kickoff for the Lions, and Herschel Walker among those back there to receive it. And this time, uh, <laughs> this time, Keith Montgomery lets it go out of bounds. Keith, the, the strategy that Penn State is using, what we call a deep onside kick. Kick the ball high and across the field, hoping that the uh, defensive man, uh, the re receiving back will come up and catch it. If not, one of your men running down the right side might recover it. A deep onside kick and keeping the ball away from Herschel at the same time. Of course, no time expired. Nobody touched the ball. 44 seconds to go. Penn State out to a 20 to 3 lead. That's Walker at the bottom of the picture and Keith Montgomery at the top. Montgomery is a flyer. And in the returns, he's averaged a little better than 21. Herschel, of course, you know all about him. He's returned two kickoffs this year for an 18-yard average, but young Montgomery is one that's been whittling and sharpening his teeth on the kick return. Now let's see if Penn State, you know they don't want to kick it to Herschel, but they might. Keith, I believe I'm correct in saying this is the first time all season long that Georgia has been behind more than one touchdown. They do have a problem right now, don't they? Yes, they do. Well, it's Montgomery. No, it is Walker. Here he comes. Looking for a block on the sidelines. Out of bounds. He's out of bounds up around the... Uh, <laughs> up around the 35. When uh, the Penn State kicker, Monka, started forward... Walker and Montgomery reversed <laughs> positions on the field, so Herschel wound up with it. And he got a decent return out of it. He got it up to the 34. 39 seconds to go in the first half. Georgia's got a lot of work to do in changing their strategy and responding at this situation during the halftime. Last finger. Passes away. Good to K. K. Park at midfield, tumbles on the Penn State side of it. Georgia with two timeouts remaining, stopping the clock, 32 seconds to play in the first half. So Georgia spends a timeout as we take another look. K goes right out in the flat. Penn State is trying to, to concede the short pass, cover deep, number 84, Clarence K catches the ball. He's a big, strong youngster, 235 pounds, good runner with the ball, made a great run against Clemson to set up their second field goal. Radisek, the linebacker, comes over and makes the play. That's the third completion for Lastinger in the ball game out of ten attempts. And he he had the uh, the one play where he overthrew Kay in the end zone when yes. he was wide open. Could have had a touchdown instead of the three points. I think we should point out this graphic that uh, Georgia has been an outstanding second half team. And the reason I think that they have is that when you press the running game, you you seem to wear the opponents out. And uh, those short yards become short gains become long gains. George is going to have to think about this strategy and make some very critical and maybe reversal types of decisions during the halftime and what they normally would do. The football is sitting just over midfield on the Penn State side. Right a second, gone to the sidelines to talk with the Penn State defensive uh, coaches, and he's come back now. And here comes George. Herman Archie, who has had two passes on his hands and dropped both so far, is the wide man. Last stinger's pass is away. The pass is incomplete intended for Clarence K. They had K out there, and Frank, they had exactly what they wanted. They had Biondi, who's 5'8", out there against Clarence K, who's 6'3", 225. Archie had turned back inside and put a block on a man, so they had the matchup they wanted. They just couldn't get the ball. Well, they, you're going to see that last thing is coming too wide. Uh, he runs right into Herschel Walker, and therefore he thinks, well, I better get rid of the ball. Kay's wide open rather than calm himself and hit him because Clay, as Key said, was wide, wide open. Second down, 10, 29 seconds to go. Passes away. The pass is caught. And it's good for a first down at the Penn State 36. And that stops the clock at 23 seconds to go in the first half. And uh, the clock will resume unless Georgia spends its last time out when they've got the change down. And Georgia does call timeout. So the Bulldogs now have none left. 
Archie number 81 is just a freshman. He's probably the fastest of the wide receivers for Georgia. Once again, Penn State is conceding the short pass. The ball is right on the money. Right a sec number 97 comes over and makes the play. Beyond it had missed him, had missed the tackle. Right a sec saved the possible touchdown. Now we must remember that Kevin Butler has the leg, the strength to kick a field goal. Should Georgia get stopped here, they can always they, they should think about uh, a field goal. Butler can kick it from 50, 60 yards. Well, they've got 23 seconds, so you figure they got three snaps if they had a timeout to spend. So they're going to have to waste some of that time for an incomplete forward pass in order to stop the clock. So let's assume if they don't have any particular success to the sidelines on this play, then they'll have to hurry a play in order to stop the clock and give Butler a shot at it. Chief, we mentioned and you've brought out that Georgia has been a one-dimension offense by choice and by the ability the shoulders that the this ball game is going to rest not on Herschel Walker in my judgment his shoulders but on the ones of Jeff John Lesting the quarterback in that second half. Well there's the pass the pass is flipped out to Walker and Walker is tumbled down at the 10 the flea flicker how about that. Kevin Harris to Herschel Walker. You gonna It's right on the 10. Georgia this is a beautiful Smith. play. We remember that uh, Oklahoma beat Nebraska for the championship a few years ago. The quick hurl pass to the end and the lateral to Herschel. 10 seconds to go. Loop to the corner. It is touchdown. A touchdown to Herman Archie. Can you believe it? Go to the clubhouse with a 20 to 3 lead at halftime, dominating the ball game. But then all of a sudden, bang, bang, here's Georgia threatening, and then they work the play to Harris, to Walker, and with no timeouts remaining, stick it the end zone on the reception by Archie with five seconds to go. They went six to six yards in 39 seconds. The kick is good. Oh, Frank, that's dynamite to have somebody strike you like that just at halftime. Oh, it can mean a big difference to the, your momentum coming out of the ball game. It will make a big difference. Let's watch the Archer number 81. You're going to see the fade pattern. It's a 101, anticipating, and he gets a mismatch. Beyond is the smallest player. Archer is six foot five. Archer is six foot five. Watch him use the advantage of the height. Look how high he goes up. Beyond had no chance. That is good strategy, good statement calling. Give credit to the Georgia D coaching staff and the execution by the last thing of the quarterback. That will help that young man right there, number 12. Look at him. That will give him tremendous confidence. It will boost his morale going into the second half. Let's look at it again. It's a sensational play. Remember, Georgia had no more timeouts. Less than 20 seconds on the clock. The ball has to be thrown at the minute that, that Archer leaves the line of scrimmage. The fade route to his outside shoulder and the mismatch. It was perfect. It's set up perfect, Keith. Don't know of anything that I've seen set up any better in many, many times. Well, that portends some excitement for the first half, for the second half. Well, the Georgia Partisans had been very, very quiet up until right now. Five seconds to go. 20 to 10, Penn State. Butler will kick off. Nails it. Bow fumbles it at the five. He's down at the 16, and the half is over. Now here's Jim Lampley. Joe, until just a few minutes ago, I was getting ready to congratulate you on a near-perfect first half. I'm sure that Georgia drive coming at the moment it did was the last thing you wanted to see. Well, you know, Georgia's a very fine football team, and that was a great drive. They're not going to die easy, and I, I think it's a great football game. Everybody ought to be enjoying it. I, uh, we got to go back in there now and suck it up and make sure we don't let that momentum get carried away. But uh, we played a good, solid first half, and... Uh, uh, they made a couple big plays on that drive, but I will be all right. Any specific changes you see that you may have to make, perhaps? Big plays on it as a result of their coming. Uh, we just got to stay with what we're doing, and we'll be all right. We'll make a couple of little. Okay. 
Okay, don't let him get complacent. I'm sure they won't after that last drive. Joe Paterno, the coach of the Penn State Nittany Lions. Yes, it's.